and welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Wendy. And I'm Elka. And we are so glad to be here today. We're sort of continuing on our series of things to make your garden garden life easier, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. We did one episode easier one. Better. Better, that's right. And more successful in the long run, too. We did episodes 164 and 165 on smart watering tips, and the other one was on weeding, chemical-free weeding, which we all really, really want to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this one's all about mulch. mulch. And in Mulching. both of the other ones, we were the mulch was part of it. Yes, it was. I mean, it's it, you know, it, it helps with the watering and it helps Bit of a with the weeding. We gave. But uh, yeah, now we go directly into the mulch. Right, into why, the what, of where, mulch. when, and all the Ws. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Who, what, when, where, and why <laughs> of it all. That's right. And really what the, the most important thing to remember about mulch is, is there's two different kinds. There is the inorganic, and that includes rocks and gravel and plastics of some sort, as well as the landscape fabric. And then there's organic types. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are really good. Those are the ones that will actually sort of blend back into your soil and enrich it. And those are wood chips. Um, Chuck leaves. Yeah, grass cuttings exactly. and, yeah. oh gosh, so all sorts of things Compost like hay. Paper. And, yeah, things like that. All the natural things that you can use in your garden for lots of things. And there's different reasons why we mulch. Exactly. Yeah, and we exactly. mulch in the springtime for different reasons in the fall. But let's start with the spring. Okay. So important to mulch because you want to keep it moist out there during the winter or during the summer heat and and dry spells that we've been having mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you also want to keep it uh hydrated so moist hydrated as well as weed free and mulches can provide that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in in that sense when you keep that down we also will uh, combine the inorganic with the organic so we use maybe a landscape fabric mm -hmm. and then cover that up with with a natural right one looking that looks robot. better yeah it, it, it all depends on the size of the project you have yeah. and on the severity of the weeds, <laughs> of the weeds and weeds, stuff like that uh, and the or, drought i guess too really mm -hmm. there's yeah, lots of different exactly. reasons so we that. just have to yeah, good combine to mention them. yeah this episode today there's going to be more about the uh organic side of it mm -hmm. and then during the winter time the reason we need to do mulching is because we have such fluctuations in our temperatures across Canada really it's it's crazy how much we get now when everything is covered by snow during the winter it's a fairly safe time but it's that time between winter and spring mm -hmm. when there's frost and then freezing and then thawing yeah. and if you've prepared yourself a good layer of mulch in the late fall then you've got some real coverage. You don't have to worry about them heaving or getting frozen underground. Which is actually the problem. When plants start growing and they heave the soil, that's where the cold, the moisture, yes, like the so water true. gets in and uh, it goes directly to the roots and kills the plants. Mm -hmm. That's a very dangerous time for, for plants. Absolutely, absolutely. And it can be organized or managed with proper amounts of mulch. And I've got to say that over the years I have mulched, but I this was a really good refresher for me too. too. Yeah to get me back on the mulching path, I'll tell you that. But it's right also now. because your garden is different. You mm -hmm. have huge trees, like Wendy has uh, uh, really big, big trees that actually naturally mulch already. I mean, all this stuff, like when there's a little storm, <laughs> or don't even talk about the big storm, her, like, or your yard is covered in, yeah, in, the pine in branches needles, and needles. Uh, yeah, and just look in my gutters and then I'll show you how much <laughs> mulch I've got in my garden. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I do almost have a natural aspect to it too. But the, the the fact is it doesn't spread it around a lot of the areas that I really need it in. So I need to move it a little bit further under the into the yard rather than just under the trees, yeah, which is exactly. really important. But the organic mulch does encourage the, the, the earthworms. Absolutely. Like it, and it, it, it kind of it turns into a natural nutrients for mm -hmm. for the plants. So that's, that's, right. a, that's a good benefit of it, yeah. putting it on. So when it starts out something like a grass clipping, it ends up being a nitrogen in your soil. And same with all of the organic mulches we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. So what? Ones? Yeah, let's just talk about what kinds of mulch is there. I mean, we talk. We always talk mulching, mulching. I know, it's a mulch word, on top. Like, tell me what it what, is. What is this mulch <laughs> thing? What are they? <laughs> well, there's, there's all different kinds of, mm -hmm. of mulch. Uh, let's start with the wood chips. Yeah. That's a very chunky looking kind of... Covers a, a lot. Covers a lot. It's, it could be a, a little bit costly. Yeah, that's true. But it I is actually quite creative. effective. No? Yes. And you can get creative. I mm -hmm. know that we often see landscape companies in my neighborhood and they're chipping a stump or they're chipping a tree that's blown down. And those are the kind of companies you can go to to see if you can get a reduced price. And that's always helpful. Yeah, and often they do actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that will help to do the coverage because you do want to have a lot of coverage. 
when it comes to things like that, when natural materials that do tend to break down. So yeah, the thicker exactly. it is, the better it is. I think the, the one thing that should be mentioned with uh, the organic or the wood chip part, um, if you find some, let, let's just say like cedar chippings, they are often very sour. Yeah. So we have mm -hmm. to make sure That's that we point. don't put too much on it because so, you know, when a rain goes on it and it seeps in that, that uh, um, you know, the, the chips and yeah, the, all the, the all the nutrients in them. It exactly. changes the pH of yeah. the soil. So you have to be, make sure that it actually is good for the plants. That That's are a really good point. Around there, right? Well, that brings me to the composted bark mulch, which is my kind of favorite yeah. because I can lay down, you know, six or seven inches of that and it completely stops the weeds from coming through mm -hmm. and it keeps the soil moist and protected sort of from that heat in the dry summers but what i love about the composted bark mulch it's chocolate brown in mm -hmm. color when i lay it over top it looks like it's beautiful soil now we were talking about this earlier you, you really should be careful when you put it on like i've tried to do it when the plants are up nice and high and it's a little bit uh, too uh, late for at that point. Yeah. And then yeah. I end up leaving it to the next season. Mm -hmm. So that's not mm -hmm. a good thing. But the composted bark mulch, I think you'll really Yeah, it was love. interesting. Wendy uh, likes the composted one. Um, I often use the one that is not quite as far yet, but there's different reasons. The composted really gives you more the effect of compost mm -hmm. because it also is more nutrients at that point. Uh, the, um, the not so composted, the more like wood chippy one is the one that I use for the look because oh. I just, just recently, and I'm actually going to do it quite soon now, um, when I go to my front door I have a little bit of a wood woodland kind oh, of little small wood, yeah, garden um, and yeah, it looks great. like it needs a little bit like some refreshment of um, of the look mm -hmm. and uh, so what I do is I put compost down just for the plants itself so they have something to recover from and because they get the, you know the soil just gets kind depleted. of blah and it, it depleted, depleted yeah. yeah but then I use the shredded bark or the wood chips on top and that is more for the look it looks clean it looks you know nice put together for the whole winter That's it looks great. nice and then over the years that just kind of decomposes but not as fast as the composted yeah you're right um, it hasn't got as long a life yes and uh, different looks I, I like that idea too so another option for doing in composting is for the shredded leaves and goodness knows in my neighborhood again and most neighborhoods across Canada we have a lot of leaves mm -hmm. in the fall especially and you can sort of lay them on the ground do a bit of chop and like run your lawnmower on top of them mm -hmm. and that good. will break That's them. a good trick. Isn't yeah. that because yeah. it breaks them down to a smaller size which is much more uh, much better in the garden because the large leaves can end up puddling and causing a bit more too much molding and, and rotting. Yeah. So the composted broken up leaves are much better and will last still just as long in the garden. Mm -hmm. But I, I love that effect. You could use a use big container too and, and then the shredder like the weed eater. Oh, that's a good idea. And then you just go in like a mixer and you just kind of <laughs> whack them into it. <laughs> You're spilling out the sides like it does when yeah. they make a cake. <laughs> so, that's a good idea. But the, the grass clipping is another one and I have to say I use my grass clipping as they come. I never put them aside and have a whole pile of them. Uh, I usually uh, don't cut my grass when it's very long, yeah, so I don't use a bag, uh, and I just leave the grass clipping as... Uh, right. Which a lot I'm of people do, mm -hmm. and I do sometimes, but then I find that if I've left it a little bit longer, hasn't gone to seed yet, but I'm cutting it a little more often, yeah. then what I want to do is just take some of it off there. So I rake it up, I haven't got a bag either. Mm -hmm. I rake it up and then I just put it into the garden, and I really like that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Lots of our customers across Canada might have access to straw or seed That's free one, hay yeah. and straw. Mm -hmm. And those are, while it may not be our look, because we're not used to seeing it in our gardens because yeah. we don't have a lot of access to that. We see it more in vegetable gardens and, and when people are growing garlic. Yeah. But that's another alternative to put in it the It might be well. also, it's, it's a little bit for me, it's also the curb appeal. Just yeah. when I was talking before, I like the look. It looks fresh and clean. I'm not sure if I want my whole front yard with, with to look straw, strawish. yeah, it looks. Uh, yeah. It's to me, it's really more like a vegetable uh, covering. Or if it's a farmer and he wants to c cover the whole field, or you have like, uh, you know, garlic or something or a like that. Or large area and in the backyard too, because you yeah. want it composted. You don't really care how it looks. You just want it to be safe and covered. So mm -hmm. maybe those are the options for that one. Yeah, and if this the straw is quite long, um, it, it might be a good protection, but it also takes quite a while before it 
uh, decomposes and this yeah. is gone. So that, you know, it's all, all the things you have to consider. Do I like mm -hmm. that? Do I like the look? Or is it just important right now, no matter what it looks like, that's that right. it protects the plants? And now. what you've got on hand. That's where big proponents uh, that's, use exactly, what you've exactly. got. Like that's a, a cheaper way of doing it. It's important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you mentioned compost earlier. Composting is really great. We often don't have large amounts of compost. It's kind of dear. It's it's like gold, black gold. I, exactly. Yeah. And it's a little cost. Costly. It is. Mm -hmm. It's costly if you have to go out and buy it. If you've got a little bit of compost or access to it, then you can use that natural compost on sort of smaller areas. Use it to protect some of the plants and then cover those plants with a bark mulch thickly that doesn't cost so much money. Mm -hmm. And that way you can get make your compost go a little bit further. Yeah. Newspaper is one, actually it's a kind of my favorite when it comes to focusing on the protection yeah. or it's also very, very good if you want to do the weed control. Yeah. You know, five sheets plus, five, six, seven sheets, uh, but then I would obviously uh, put something on top that yeah. looks better, some bulk mulch or something. I just thought about this too. When you cover your newspaper, it's actually covering two things because normally when you put the newspaper down, it can fly away. Mm -hmm. But if you lay it all down and then put something on to hold it down, then yeah. that's going to really keep the weeds from coming in, keep the moisture in and the soil nice and safe. Yeah, uh, yeah. depending on which time you're using it. For. Exactly. I, I usually make sure that I use the real newspaper part of it, not necessarily the, the glossy flyer because they take oh, a little course. bit yeah. uh, uh, longer to compose. But it's it's actually, it's on hand. It's a nice recycling way of using yeah, the paper. And they use know, vegetable the oils or vegetable dyes now in the newspaper print, so it's not like you're putting anything bad into your yard. Exactly. And so uh, that's, that's that's a real handy one because me, we all have it. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Free. Yeah, and when you're out there, you can read a few notes and things like that. Read a few articles while you're gardening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So when are the best, or when are the two times per year that we want to mulch? Well, it's two different reasons. It's yeah. like fall planting, spring blooming bulbs. It's also fall and spring mulching. Yeah. yeah? The spring is for the reason we want to keep the weeds down. Yeah. And we also want to keep the moisture in. Yes. You know, that's a very hot, Im dry important summers. part. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And so you'll do that with the early, and you want to put it in early. That's my big thing because yeah. if I leave it too long, then I'm I'm walking in with my wheelbarrow and my shovel trying to put it down, mm -hmm. and it's it's not good. And I you have very small mistakes. little plants coming out already, so yes. you might break them off yeah, or so step early, on it or something. Yeah. Uh, the earlier, the better in the springtime for that kind of uh, application, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, and exactly. what about for the early, the fall would yeah, be uh, for protection mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. then. Like uh, you put the mulch on, you want uh, the compost part of the mulch is really good because the all summer the plants used up yeah. the soil and you know like you said it's it's depleted now mm -hmm. so compost compost on it for the soil to enrich it again and also sometimes when the when the compost is relatively fresh it is better actually to have that in the fall because it has all winter to kind of ah, seep into the yeah. soil and then to when neutralize you put it or nutritionize it again. Yeah, yeah. and then oh, you have good. new little tiny plants and seedlings coming in in the spring, then uh, you know compost is often very strong and burns the roots. So they oh, have all winter to sit there and nicely seep into the ground. And good so points. Those are really good points. And so where do you want to put the compost over there? Everywhere. Any of your mulch. <laughs> That's right, everywhere. <laughs> but when it comes to specific places in your garden, if you've got perennials or shrubs or trees, you want to give them a nice, easy, uh, you know, 6 to 12 inches around each of these places before you start laying in your mulch because they need to have air and they need to have room to grow. And if the mulch is too close, that's going to stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. So a nice uh, break around them before you start applying the really heavy, heavy mulch. You probably could put a nice small layer down of something thin to begin with, but keep that area wide open for them to explore and grow in the springtime when that winter time has passed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. good. So we covered everything? I, I, I <laughs> think we did. So there's yeah. lots of uh, the double use, what, when, where, why. why how, who. Exactly. <laughs> Get someone else to do it for you maybe. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, I find it quite, uh, quite uh, what's the word, settling when I go out in the garden. I know I'm giving it the protection it needs. Mm -hmm. It really is important and it'll actually pay off in the long run because a couple of years down the road, all of that natural organic material has gone right back into your soil and provided for the earthworms and yep. given nutrients back to the soil. I think sometimes when we clean up our yard, 
and we clean up our perennials. I mean, a lot of them completely die back, like the hostas. And I usually don't take the leaves yeah. away at all. I just mm -hmm. let them you compost, know, kind of compost ar around Mulch the plants. Themselves. Yeah. I have some truth? ferns, they kind of from the weight. You know, we have a lot of rain. On the West Coast, there's also uh, when it gets cold in, in you know, in the uh, east side or yes. even, uh, north or northern uh, climates, it's, it's very cold. So the ferns, for example, when they start kind of folding up and bending over, I just take those ones and just put them right on top of the plants to protect yeah. themselves. You know, grasses, it's I tie them really together, point, so it's yeah. like the plant itself often Can gives be. us the, the, the compost or the mulch that we need. Well, you know, that's a very good point because when I did grasses a couple of years ago, I had my clippers with me, mm -hmm. and as I cut the grasses, I cut them into three-inch little strips and left all the seeds on the top and all the flowering, brought those inside, but the rest of the clippings I put on the soil around it. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly. a, another yep. source right Just there. We hadn't even planned on talking about right there <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, we would love to know what... Uh, we always ask a question and our question for today is what is your favorite type of mulch because we often ask these questions and get the best answers back that teach us something so please let us know what your favorite type of mulch is exactly so send your answer to gardenclub at botanist.com and tomorrow we're going to have a draw mm -hmm. and three winners will get a ten dollar botanist gift, gift card. card oh that's great and you can spend it on plants or on some little uh, goodies for your garden like a nice trowel or a shovel or the hori hori my absolute favorite <laughs> use it all the time so we hope this has helped and we hope you have enjoyed this uh, episode today. It's been fun doing it with you, Elka, and Always I've fun. learned a little something. I like that as well. <laughs> so have a great week in the garden and we will see you next week. See you next week. Bye Thank you. Now. Bye.